Hello students, uh, this is a summary of lesson 1.3, which was all about parallel lines, specifically parallel lines crossed by a transversal. The first thing we talked about was just how to label parallelism. Okay, so these lines I tried to draw as parallel lines, which I think you know are lines that will never meet. They have the same orientation, they're two different lines, um, but I don't have a symbol to show that they're parallel yet. And it turns out that in geometry, we do have a symbol. What we do is we add little arrows to the lines. Instead of like tick marks show that segments are congruent to each other, little arrows show that lines are parallel to each other. So these symbols mean, since I, they each have the same number of little arrows, these lines are parallel to one another. And I might have a different set of lines that are parallel in the diagram, and they each only have one arrow, but these are parallel to each other, but not parallel to these. Um, the other thing to know about that is, if you want to write a sentence that says two lines are parallel, you can say like line AB and line CD like this, but we can, uh, there's a symbol that shows that they're parallel to one another, and that is simply, it looks like two parallel lines. And so that symbol right there means is parallel to, right? And so this is a shorthand way of saying line AB is parallel to line CD. Notice also that I put these two lowercase letters here. Um, this is a different way of labeling lines and you don't have to use any symbols. We could actually call this M and N. If I use lowercase letters, I can do that with lines. So I could also say that line M is parallel to line N. You may see that uh, shorthand. But what's really more important than just understanding how to label parallel lines is the corresponding angles property. So you should pause the video and write this down if you haven't done so already. Oh, these lines are parallel. But I'm gonna explain it now. Uh, it says, if two lines crossed by a transversal are parallel, then any corresponding, which means same position, any corresponding angles are congruent. Notice that I have two lines that are parallel, but that word transversal that you might not have seen before, the transversal in this diagram is this other line that's crossing them, right? And so it's, it's, oops, it's transversing them, okay? It's, a transversal is a line that crosses two other lines, uh, at least two or more other lines, but we don't really need to worry about that. What we need to worry about is the fact that we have two uh, lines here that are parallel, and when you do that, you end up with eight angles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, and you can think of them in two groups of four, one along the top parallel line and one along the bottom parallel line. And then we also have, we can think of the angles that are inside in between these two lines as interior angles. That's angles three, four, five, and six. And then any angles that are on the outside of them are exterior angles, angles one, two, seven, and eight. So that's important here in a moment. But if we go back to this uh, description then, we have two lines that are crossed by a transversal and they're parallel. So any corresponding angles are angles that are in the same position, those are congruent. So corresponding angles, okay, are the angles that you can find in the same place. For instance, angle one is congruent to angle five, all right? So if angle one and angle five, and that's because they're in the same position. So I could say angle one, is congruent to angle five because they're corresponding, right? They're both in the upper left. Angle two is in the upper right and angle six is in the upper right. So those are corresponding angles. So I can say the angle two is congruent to angle six. Angle three and angle seven are in the lower right. So angle three is congruent to angle seven. And then finally four and eight. So angle four is congruent to angle eight. So you, you can find these corresponding angles all over the place. There's other kinds of angles too. There's ones called alternate interior angles and alternate interior angles are also congruent. And I'll show you why. Remember that angle one and angle three are congruent because they're vertical angles. Angle one and angle three are the same. I just showed you that angle one is the same as angle five. Well, angle three and angle five have to be the same as well then, because one is the same as three and one is the same as five. Then angle three is congruent to angle five. They're on the interior and alternate means you jump over the line. So the other alternate interior angles are angles four and six. Angle four is congruent to angle six. And then lastly, we have uh, 
oops, we have alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles are the same idea, only now they're, instead of being on the interior, they're on the exterior. So if I think about, well, one is the same as five, and five is the same as seven, because they're vertical, so one is the same as seven. So I can say angle one is the same as angle seven. They're congruent to one another. They're on opposite sides of the line, and they're on the exterior. And the same thing about angles two and eight. So angle two is congruent to angle eight. Um, if, so make sure that you understand all of that, and then I'm gonna do two examples. We did this example in class. So here's example one. I would copy this if you didn't get this already. Um, and these lines are parallel, and I just said, well, what's the measurement of angle X, and what's the measurement of angle Y, and also, why is that? So I'll tell you now that X is 50 degrees, um, and the reason is because it's corresponding with the 50 degree angle. They are in the same position. These lines are parallel. Angle X and that 50 degree angle are in the same position. They're both in the lower left so they're corresponding. And angle Y is, uh, well, angle Y makes a linear set with angle X. So it's 130. A linear set are two angles that add to, uh, or that form a straight line, and they have to add to 180. So I would say the reason here is because it's a linear set with angle X, right? Because uh, 180 minus 50 is 130. And then here's another example. Um, and I just wanted to figure out, so these lines are parallel, and I gave a couple uh, angle measurements here, and I said, what's the measurement of angle A? Well, angle A is 60 degrees, and it's because it's vertical angles with the 60 degree angle, right? Angle A is a vertical angle with that 60 degree angle. Now, figuring out angle B is a little bit more challenging. Um, it's, it's not as bad as you might think, Let's see here. This 60 degree angle uh, is corresponding to that angle there, which is a 60 degree angle. Um, okay, so if I, that's a 60 degree angle. Did you notice that here are two lines crossing? And that makes this a 60 degree angle because they're vertical angles. And angle B, right? forms a linear set with this 90 degree angle, this 60 degree angle, and then angle B. So if you do a little math there, you find out that B is 30 degrees because it's a linear set. Uh, I also wanted to point out that um, I could prove a, a couple other things. This 90 degree angle matches this 90 degree angle here because they're vertical angles. And that means that this angle is 30 degrees. And remember that A is 60. And I wanted to also point out that I know that this is 30 because the three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. And then finally, the last thing I wanted to show you is that angle B and this angle here are alternate interior angles. So it's another way of showing that angle B is 30 degrees. Uh, try those angle puzzles that you find in the, um, in the Schoology page and bring them to class on Thursday or Friday.